What's up everybody, Joshua Yale here with Dustin Laguerre. We are at the Spider-Man 2 preview event where we just got hands on time with Spider-Man 2 on PS5. Uh, so Dustin, uh, I know you're a big a combat guy. How'd you feel about the combat in the game? I really wanted to dive into the combat and the combat changes. Now the big change is the parry system. Yes, there's a lot of cool gadgets and all that stuff and you can use the Venom abilities to your advantage, but the parry system is really interesting. When a reticle turns red from an enemy attack, basically you have an opportunity to parry it. You have sort of this pretty big window to do that parry. It took me a little bit to get used to dodging bullets, which are also red, versus a parry. But once you get it, it feels really natural when you're supposed to be executing those. How did, how did you feel about the combat? Yeah, they really make you parry a lot of things. So yeah. a lot of big heavy attacks, and there's a boss fight where you, have, you must do the parry to sort of get the better of the boss and, and stagger him a bit so you can attack him. So yeah, it did add a new dimension. It's not like the most like groundbreaking thing, but it did add yeah, another thing you have to pay attention to when you're jumping around doing cool Spider-Man fights. Yeah, in addition to that, they also allow you to place your own web lines when you're do before you get into combat, right? So you can try and do your stealth takedowns or whatever. I really, really like that because you can sort of make your own path around the map this time as opposed to being locked into a, into a situation or a beam that you're not right. allowed to traverse off right. of. Right. I did that once, then like fell off and had to fight the whole room. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'll need a little practice before I do that. Uh, speaking of combat, uh, we have Symbiote Spider-Man, you know, Peter Parker and then Miles Morales with his like electricity, like Venom Shot kit. Two very different ways of fighting. How did those feel to you? Yeah, honestly, the way it works are you hold R1 and then you press the face buttons to execute whatever you want to, or uh, L1 and execute on the face buttons. It felt fairly samey because I used the same abilities on Peter and and Miles. Sorry, not abilities, gadgets. Mm. So for the gadgets, you know, you had your web thing that came out and it brought a bunch of enemies into a big pile and then you could execute your venom attacks and like hit them all at once so it felt really powerful and really fun to execute all the abilities in a way where they played off of each other so i think fans that have enjoyed the fighting in the spider-man game so far are going to have just more layers to build upon their already cool combos in the game. Yeah, I really like playing as Symbiote Spider-Man because he just does these like insane like Hulk like level powers, like smashes into people. Um, and you really get to use the Symbiote in like really fun, cool ways. It really fulfills the, 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 the power fantasy of having like Venom's powers and stuff. I thought that was really cool. And, and some of the voiceover that you get when you're activating those Venom powers, I will say, are really, really cool. Like when you hit the thumbsticks in and he goes like Super Saiyan or yeah, like <laughs> or a rage Super mode. Venom Rage yeah. Mode. Uh, those, those are really, really good. And he's like, you want it? All right. <laughs> and, and that's really empowering. But it also sort of lends into the, the narrative of how Peter is sort of losing his way as, a, as an individual and the symbiote is taking over. Yeah, he's way more aggressive. Uh, the, the voice actor is essentially doing like his Christian Bale Batman voice, but for Spider-Man as he yeah. gets more evil and evil with uh, the Venom suit on. I'm just here to save my friend. Did you get to the boss fight at the end? I, I did not get to the boss fight because I ended up on this side quest where I took out the three uh, combat arenas and then they're like, all right, you got to go do the last one. I even asked the rep, I'm like, can I just go finish this tour? <laughs> and they're like, no, you got to do it now. So I, I cleared that, but then I had interviews. I got busy. Yeah, you did. So, yeah. Um, I actually, you did. I got to play through yeah. to the end and it um, it ends with, not to get into too much spoiler stuff, but it's essentially uh, what happens after what we saw in the original gameplay demo where you go after the lizard you're, you're Peter, you're in the Venom suit, you go under the sewers, you track him down, then you have a cool boss fight. Um, it's it's weird how the lizard is this giant monster inspired by the, the Shred storyline from the comics where he gets bigger and bigger oh. um, after he, or, or Shed, Shed, because he sheds and he becomes more monstrous. Um, but uh, I almost felt bad for the lizard, even though he was the monster, because yeah. Peter hits him so hard with those Venom tentacles. Like, <laughs> Peter becomes the beast, he becomes the monster. So I like that how they're playing with that. And then, it, you know, the lizard escapes up into the, the surface and you chase him through the streets of New York City and then it ends with, uh, well, Craven, you know, enters and makes everything go crazy and then Blizzard starts running up 
a skyscraper and then you web to him and then ride him like water ski style up <laughs> the building as like, you know, debris is falling at you and stuff. Uh, and that's where it ended. Uh, but I thought, what a great, fun cinematic moment. And I thought they really are having uh, the, the players, they're treating the players to a really fun time through all these things that might normally be like a quick time event, but you get a little more control throughout them and had a really fun time with it. Just before you get to the boss fight, actually, they really dive into Dr. Connors and his family life because he has a, a child at home, you know, his wife and child have had to leave. And it's really a tragic boss fight that it's even taking place. And it lends into that darker storytelling that they've talked about leading up to the launch of the game. So, you know, as a, as a dad, I, I really appreciate that they're looking at the humanity of the character a lot. And they've done a great job with that and, you know, Aunt May and all the other stories that they've, they've hit on. But this one's really interesting. Peter's going down a dark path. You have Dr. Connors who's just trying to get back to his family. And you just you beat the crap out of him. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, it's a victory, but not really. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very bittersweet. But yeah, they really do play into the drama. There's even a side quest for, I guess it's a main story beat for Miles, where he just has to help out like someone in the community. And I thought, oh, this is gonna be like so cheesy. I'm not gonna care about this. And I, I, I'm i telling the truth when I say, I actually got a little teary-eyed at the end of it, because they do a, such a great job of yeah, making you feel for these characters who are really going through it. And there's a lot of fun stuff too. Like I ran into the kind of funny crew doing their shirtless Spider-Mans. Oh, Oh, wow. I mean, their, their identities are unknown at this time. We'll never know. But it sure <laughs> did look a lot like Greg Miller and Blessings. <laughs> we'll, we'll never know the true identity of those uh, two. Yeah, May's return from the first game, right? Yeah. 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 Um, so uh, final thoughts? I'm very positive. Like, you know, these Spider-Man games have been phenomenal. They're like a staple in PlayStation's library right now. And Spider-Man 2 is looking like it's not going to disappoint. Yeah, absolutely. Right as I started playing, my muscle memory from the first game kicked in, and once I got used to all the new abilities and traversal, and um, oh, speaking of traversal, the web wings. Oh yeah, we, that's, that should be the last thing we talk about. Yeah. The web wings. You can now yes use wings to fly through New York City. I felt it was a little bit too Superman-y at some point, but eventually once I used. I got used to like weaving in the wings with also webbing mm -hmm. uh, through the city. Because you slow down. It, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was like, oh, there's there's like a, a, a rhythm you sort of get into, mm -hmm. um, and it is a fun like alternate way to fly. Yeah, I actually really like the the web wings because you you get some momentum with your web swing and then you pop those out. If you can get in the slipstream, then you kind of go to set areas in the map wherever the wind tunnels take you, and you get across that map so fast. And that also lends into the fact that this is developed for PlayStation Five only, so you are able able to go across the map faster. They are pushing more at you faster throughout the engine, throughout your experience in the game. So uh, Web Wings, very impressive, not only because it's fun to play as, but also from a technical perspective, because you can go across the city very quickly or just swap on over to Miles or Peter instantaneously. That is super cool. We'll end it on that note. We'll have plenty more from, from Destin's full official preview. This is just our first reaction, first impressions. But yeah, uh, stay tuned to IGN for more on Spider-Man 2.